successful career in a bit more. We've actually got him tonight uh, in New York City for his only Canadian interview, uh, and it's good to have him back in the program, Mr. George Galloway. How are you today, sir? I wish I was there in person with you. I have fond memories of the show, and uh, the last few minutes has just reminded me how entertaining it is. <laughs> However, I am going to speak to a huge audience uh, over the next few nights uh, via the Internet, and the uh, halls are full, standing room only. And it's a bit odd, isn't it, George? I'm sitting here in New York. Uh, I've heard of being more royal than the king, even more Catholic than the pope, but uh, your government seems more concerned with national security issues than the United States of America. That's a bit of an odd state of affairs, no? It certainly is. Were you surprised by the court's decision today? <clears throat> no, not by the court's decision. That's just the first uh, step. We won, actually an important question in the court today and that will stand us in good stead in the judicial review that we're uh, embarked upon but I was extremely surprised by the government's decision to ban me as I say I'm in the middle of uh, an enormously successful tour <coughs> of 12 13 US cities uh, I sit in the British Parliament I've been elected five times 23 years if I was a terrorist or a security risk you'd think either the speaker of the House of Commons or the Homeland Security Division of the United States would have noticed. So why do you think you were banned then? We've heard the government side. Why do you think it is that you are not allowed into this country? Well, they initially said it was because of my views on Afghanistan, though that morphed over the days into a criticism of the aid convoy that I took into Gaza. Uh, 24 ambulances, a fire engine, trucks full of wheelchairs, children's nappies, biscuits, food, medicines. It's an odd definition of terrorism, no? It's, it's a complicated one. But what's interesting about the thing is that you made it a freedom of speech issue afterwards, didn't you? Like, you think this is about freedom of speech? Well, I don't think that there's an unlimited freedom of speech. I opposed, for example, the Holocaust-denying fascist uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen's visit to Britain. If somebody's coming into your country to stir up racial hatred, uh, then a country has a right to keep them out. But I'm a democratic elected politician of the left an anti-racist to the marrow of my bones, what conceivable reason can there be to stop me touring Canada when I've toured it so many times before, appearing on flagship programs like your own, speaking in all the major cities? When did I become a terrorist? Well, but if, if, you, I mean, when you oppose the, uh, the, uh, the Dutch filmmaker from coming into the country in the past, I wonder, is it, could it just be that this government at this point looked at some of the things you've said and they have deemed that your opinions are not the kinds of opinions they want to allow into this country? And so using freedom of speech as, you know, like you said, it's not a guarantee that the country just made the decision that Galloway should not be in here. And in that sense, is, does that make sense? Well, the, this is a minority government here today, gone tomorrow, and I hope tomorrow comes quite quickly. And I think a lot of Canadians feel the same thing. Uh, so I, I really don't accept that anything that I have said, let alone done, uh, is justification for keeping a British parliamentarian of 23 years standing uh, with impeccable anti-racist credentials out of Canada. Because I disagree with them about Palestine, as it happens, I've never been a supporter of Hamas, but I am a supporter of democracy. And the Palestinian people have the right to choose their own leaders. And I can't turn up in Gaza with ambulances and look around for some opposition to give them to. I can only give them to the authorities in Gaza, which is what any NGO would do. It's what the UN would do. It's what the Canadian Red Cross would do. What else can you do? You have to deal with the authorities that are elected to govern the place. And that happens to be Hamas. I wouldn't have voted for them, but the Palestinian people did. You know, and it, herein lies the problem, and I wonder, I mean, not you specific to this situation, but you specifically as a politician and being in, in, you know, elected for as long as you have been, this seems to be the challenge of trying to get anywhere with the discussion of the Palestinian situation with the Israelis, is that it, it seems like, I mean, I was reading on the blog post when you, were, when you were banned, there was an enormous amount of people who were against the ban, there were an enormous amount of people who were, the rhetoric ranged from, this is a, you know, a, a, a savior of you, a free speech to the JDL should just have a sniper take him out. Like it was that, it was that insane. The level of discourse surrounding you being banned, and I, and I sort of wondered in the bigger picture, how can any politician ever get anything done as it relates to the Middle East? Just recognizing the first three layers of the conversation are always seemingly hysteria. 
Well, I think it has to be done from the outside, uh, asking uh, Israel to deal with this matter. It's like asking a surgeon to operate on his own foot. It just isn't going to happen. It uh, will have to be the international community, which, after all, gives Israel every cent, every bullet, every plane, every bomb that it drops on the Palestinians. The United States, where I'm sitting in particular, is going to have to insist that some modicum of justice for the Palestinian people is afforded or there's going to be no peace in that area. And if there's no peace there, there's going to be no peace anywhere in the world. It's Palestine and the double standards, the injustice that is poisoning the uh, body politic in the Muslim world and driving some Muslims crazy, so crazy that they want to hurt us. And we have to try and, uh, we have to try and drain that. But there lies the rub. This becomes a circle. So, I mean, the Israeli, the Israeli position, which is supported by lots of countries, is that they're just trying to protect themselves from, you know, what they view as an obvious threat. And it seems like no one can seem to get past the first couple layers of this conversation. Yeah, but as we've spoken about before, there is international legality. Palestine was a country that no longer exists. Its territory is illegally occupied by military force. The United Nations Security Council, and that includes Canada, demands that Israel withdraws from those territories occupied by force, which they've now held for 41 years, and set the Palestinian people free. Now, these are facts. The Jewish Defense League, so-called, not very defensive and certainly doesn't speak for most Jews that I know, uh, is not prepared to accept that fact. But why should the Canadian government be led by such extremists? These people would be extreme in Israel, never mind in Canada. The vast majority of people in the world know that there, if there's no justice, there'll be no peace. And the Palestinian people are crying out for justice. And the more desperate we make them, the more desperate their actions will be. And that's why Hamas was elected, for example, because for 12 years, the Oslo Agreement, signed by President Arafat, wasn't implemented one centimeter, one iota. And the people despaired. And Unless we give them something to hope for, that despair is going to multiply and deepen. And this kind of decision by the Canadian government, criminalizing the Palestinian cause, criminalizing uh, a, a leading spokesman for their cause outside in the world, is not going to help. I don't know why the Canadian government wants to make Canada amongst the hated on the earth. Canada used to be loved in the world. You know, it had a great reputation. Why are you destroying it all? Well, I know for you that you know the Palestinian cause is not is not new for you. This is something you've been a part of for a long time. But as it relates to some of your your, your views and opinions of the Muslim world, how much of them are your views, or the fact that you represent you know a, a place in East London where you have, you have a, a very high Muslim population? How many of them are your views versus you representing your constituents' views? Well, that's not fair, George. I've only been an MP there for three, three and a half years. No, but years. that's what I'm talking about. The last uh, three and a half years, like how much, like you, when you have a, you're a politician, well, part of that I, is reflecting their views, right? But, but George, I, I've been a champion of the Palestinian cause for 35 years. For 18 years, I was a member of parliament, more than 18 years, a member of parliament for a constituency with no Muslims in it at all, none at all. It's really an unfair implication. I do what I do and say what I say because I believe it. You may not agree with me, but please believe that I sincerely believe it. No, I, I, uh, granted, but I'm, I'm just saying as a, as a person who, rep if you're saying the last few years, you, you're in a riding which has, you know, more Muslims, I, I guess you're learning more about some of their values, and I wonder how that makes its way into what you do, because part of your job as an MP is to reflect your values, but part of your job is also to re reflect your constituents' values, and I'm wondering over the past few years how much uh, other, other information you've been able to pick up that has changed something. Well, no, my values have been the same since I was uh, 18 years old. So uh, I didn't need to sit for three and a half, four years in a new constituency in East London to, uh, to learn anything about the Muslim world. I've been involved in it uh, the best years of my life. And I really strongly urge people in Canada to see past this kind of flurry of accusation and defamation, uh, the, the, the very idea that I can be seriously discussed as a terrorist when I'm sitting under Big Ben in the British Parliament uh, and touring the United States. Doesn't that strike people in Canada as just crazy? Yeah, I think it does. <laughs> a lot of people. George, it's great to talk to you. Thanks for your time, man. Thanks, George. Appreciate that. Now, uh, George Galloway plans to do his speaking uh, tour via video link. So you'll be able to check him out. Uh, all right, last more to come with